Hey, Planeswalkers, Mithras here, hope you're doing well and staying safe. Welcome to today's episode of Top Deck. I appreciate you tuning in and taking the time. Now, quickly, we are running a Golgari Death Touch deck. This is a Platinum to Mythic 6 plus win deck. Now, I also want to cover this in honor of Chaldeum coming up here soon. We do have Thin the Fangbearer, which now allows us uh, with our death, death Touch creatures, if they deal combat damage to a player, that player gets two poison counters on them. So I just wanted to throw that out there as in kind of a brew ahead here um, as some something a little bit different and a little fun today. Um, but with that said, we do have a lot going on with this deck um, today here and a lot going on this episode. So please feel free to tune in down below to the timestamps that make sense. We're going to cover the, uh, the strategy objective of the deck. We'll dive into the deck list. We'll cover the sideboard how to sideboard and then we're going to go into our best of three and best of one uh, magic matches competitive matches for you here today now if you do have questions or comments please let me know down below you can hop in the discord server as well and i appreciate your support so please feel free to subscribe to the channel down over there and like the video so let's hop into it right away here in terms of the strategy and objective again this is a golgari deck so it's both green and black giving us the golgari um guild from Ravnica and then additionally it's death touch because we really really play around the death touch mechanic here um, where any amount of damage is sourced with death touch deals to a creature is enough to destroy it now honestly I kind of wanted to call this mid-range deck um, technically it probably is but a little bit more fun with the death touch uh, just because of, of what we do have going on there so realistically what the idea of this deck is is to drop creatures use some of your draw mechanic with the advantage uh, capabilities here that are woven into the deck, but then also leveraging creatures like Chevelle here, Bane of Monsters, where at the beginning of our upkeep, if our opponents control no permanents with uh, bounty counters on them, put a bounty counter on target creature or planeswalker, and then whenever a permanent uh, an opponent controls with a bounty counter on it dies, we gain through life and draw a card. So lots of replenishing here on the early, early game, and then we got a lot of things up here um, where we can help balance and close the game out, as well as continue my favorite, the Great Henge, uh, to keep that board rolling and, and moving as well. Um, so that is what we have going on today with this deck. Again, focusing really in terms of locking down that early game, pinpointing creatures, taking them out one by one, and then it, eventually doing enough chip damage and having some higher end uh, damage uh, dealers here to help close the match for us. Um, so that is what we have going on. Now at a deeper level here, uh, we'll take a look because we got additional cards that will play in this deck. So we have Blood Chief's Thirst here. This guy's got Kicker. We can kick it for three. If we don't, we can destroy target creature Planeswalker with convert mana costs two or less. Otherwise, kill target creature Planeswalker. Pair as well, again, direct damage with Chevelle. Um, Falmir Knight a good uh, draw card here where we can pay three draw if we need and then we got a 1-1 one, one death toucher um, as well that will trigger edge wall innkeeper um, so whenever we cast that uh, a creature spell that has an adventure on it uh, we get to draw a card and it doesn't have to have that adventure cast first. Um, again, another nice 1-1 one, one body. And then Ranger's Guile here. Um, beginning to see this a little bit more actually in terms of gruel and green and all those things. Um, but target creature we control gets plus one, plus one, gains hexproof till end of turn. Um, then we have Ram Through. So this is really nice uh, because when we choose death touch creatures, it's gonna go right through and knock them out. Um, so here target creature we control deals damage equal to its power to target creature uh, we don't control. If the creature we control has trample, excess damage, damage will be dealt um, to that creature's uh, owner uh, controller instead. Then we got Wilt, a nice cycling card, and also a main board for us to destroy target artifact or enchantment. We have Chevelle, we covered that. We got Skull Prophet, a 3-1 here that uh, is a mana dork uh, that gives us either additional swamp or a forest, or we can tap two and mill two cards. We got Hooded Blight Fang, so this guy really plays in that death touch again. Um, whenever a creature we control attacks with death touch, um, each opponent opponent uh, loses one life and we gain one life um, and then whenever a creature we control with death touch deals damage uh, to a planeswalker uh, destroy that planeswalker then we have uh, inscription of rune so here a three drop but also we can kick it for another four so pretty expensive 
Um, it is sorcery, but here opponent will discard two cards. We can return target creature card with converted mana cost two or less from a graveyard of the battlefield or destroy target creature with converted mana cost three or less. Um, so very powerful if we can get that to connect. We got Pelaka Predation here. Um, this is a very, very powerful uh, modal land where we can look at our opponent's hand, choose a card from it with converted mana cost three or greater, and that player will discard that card. Otherwise, we can have this enter as a tapped land. Um, then we got Balaged Recovery, same thing, another powerful modal uh, land where we can return target card from our graveyard to our hand, and then this will also enter as a tapped land. Then we have good old Lovestruck Beast, again, a 1-1 uh, white human creature token we can activate with this uh, Sorcery Adventure spell, or we can have a 5-5 beast creature come in at 3, but we do need that 1-1 attacker, well supported by the other 1-1s uh, that we do have in this deck. Now we also have Questing Beast, this guy does a ton of things, as always, but it's got Vigilance, Death Touch, Haste, can't be blocked by creatures two or less, power two or less, combat damage that wouldn't be dealt by creatures we control can't be prevented, very powerful, people forget about that a lot, and then whenever this uh, creature deals combat damage to opponent, it uh, deals that much damage as well to a Planeswalker that opponent controls. Then, whew, moving fast. Kogla the Titan Ape. So Kogla the Titan Ape here is a legendary creature. When it enters the battlefield, we get to fight a target creature we don't control. <coughs> Excuse me. Whenever it attacks, destroy target artifact or enchantment. Uh, defending player controls and the two there where we can kick back a human uh, to its owner's hand. And this will, uh, Kogla will gain indestructible. So human, we have a human there. We have a human here. Um, we also have zombies and another human there. So very, very easy to activate in this deck. And then last but not least, the Great Henge. Um, cost less to cast. Do the power among creatures. Greatest power among creatures. We can tap for two uh, mana, gain two life. And then whenever a non creature enters the battlefield uh, we'll put a plus one plus one counter out and draw a card um, we got good old swamps we got a decent mix here um, in terms of lands you could always do my favorite um, throw in one of those crawling barons would also wouldn't be bad in this deck because we have a decent amount of um, big creatures you could also throw in a bonders enclave the other thing that i would consider here um, is this deck's gonna have a tough match potentially against rogues um, so throwing in the um the uh, good old uh, Polo Kronos in this deck might be something worth worthwhile for you. Um, additionally, in terms of the sideboard or main board, um, some of the spiders as well. Um, but we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Very excited to play this deck. Um, so that is the main board. Again, questions, comments, let me know down below or hop into the, hop into the Discord server. Now we're going to dive into the sideboard. Um, so first off, we got Cling to Dust. So again, like the rogues that I talked about, um, this card is very powerful here where we can instant speed exile target card from a graveyard. If was a creature card we gain through life otherwise we draw a card and then for four we can exile five other cards and rinse and repeat um great against rogue decks um also good spots for this one though or in um Rakdos midrange anything leveraging graveyard this could be red with phoenixes ox those kinds of things as well um then we have duress so target opponents can reveal their hand you choose a non-creature non-land card that player discards that card great against control decks uh dimmer control also great against doom decks uh esper mardu uh you name it you got it uh so mainly yorian decks great against ultimatum those kinds of things so essentially anything that's cast a lot of spells not a lot of creatures you're going to throw this in agonize your remorse same thing uh, but this is more powerful against graveyard hate as well um, so keep that in mind anything Ryan Luris um, this could also be rogue stacks this could also be any of the dimmer control decks that we talked about and plus all the other ones we just mentioned um, but here this uh, card allows us to look at our opponent's hand reveal a non-land card from it um, or a card from the graveyard exile that card we lose one life now uh, we have another will tier so you're going to play this uh again against late game decks most likely anything right artifacts or enchantments this is great against mono red it's great against cruel aggro as well um hits annex uh, i always like to say that because it's a big one but gets great henge and the cleave and um, we got another hooded blight fang um so this i like against creature based decks this is good against aggro decks um again in terms of late game decks i like this in here too um, because we can keep the pressure on and get all those get all those pinging things going on um, as well 
We also have Pestilent Haze. So here we get a board wiper. Um, all creatures get negative two, negative two at the end of turn. Remove two loyalty counters from each planeswalker. Um, you gotta be careful with this one because you're gonna hit a lot of your stuff with it. Um, but this will help you against things like Mono Red. Um, it will also help you against Knight stacks, Boros Mardu, um, can help you against Warriors decks, those kinds of things too. Uh, then we got Barrier Breach, so very powerful card at instant for three exi exile, not just destroy, exile up to three target enchantments. So you're going to run this against Doom decks, um, anything in that space this is going to work great for you. Um, or any enchantment deck. Uh, extinction event, choose honor even, exile each creature uh, with convert mana cost to the chosen value, zero is even. You're gonna run this against creature based stacks, so mainly aggro or mid range. Uh, mid range creature based, that could be things like Slesnia, um, could be bounce decks, or Slesnia, well, it's a Slesnia bounce deck, um, counter decks, um, those kinds of things. And then last but not least, we got Gem Razor, so Reach Trample, we got Mutate. Um, whenever this creature mutates, destroy target artifact or enchantment your opponent controls. I run this against late game decks, uh, Yorian decks. You're also going to want to run against rogues. Um, the reach is going to be very, very helpful. Uh, so keep those things in mind. Also works well against uh, mono red and mono green. Or sorry, <laughs> a gruel aggro uh, in terms of getting those uh, great henges or cleaves or uh, enchantments, early game enchantments off the board. Um, so that is what we have with this Golgari Death Touch deck. Very excited to be playing this again. Could be considered a mid-rangey type deck like i said um, but now we're going to talk about how to board in terms of uh, aggro mid-range and late game so in terms of aggro we're pretty pretty good here um, the only thing i'd maybe throw in would be hooded blight fang and potentially pestilent haze depending on what you're playing maybe an extension event maybe a gem razor um, the only things i would honestly flip out of this deck uh, we are running a healthy 19 lands very aggressive but we do got a ton of these because it's uh 22 um we do have pump here um what i would look to remove potentially is if they aren't doing damage to you um rangers guile or wilt um those would be the three and that's going to get you to where you need to in the in the early game matchup um ideally it's about slowing them down using your death touch all those things um and direct kills that are really going to make make a difference you could also always another good suggestion is putting in the two drop kill spell um as well which we don't see here then uh, in terms of the mid-range battle, again, going to depend on if it's creature-based or uh, more control-based. If it's more control, we're going to go Agonize, Remorse, and Duress. If it's more creature-based, uh, Hooded Blight Fang, you're probably not going to play anything else. Maybe Gem Razor or those. Um, again, what would I look to move out? Well, if it's if it's less creature-based, uh, more control-based, you're going to keep Ranger's Gallon in this turn. Most likely, you'll move out Wilt. Um, the other things that you could consider is moving out a Blood Chief Thirst. If they're not playing... Um, if they're not playing uh, Planeswalkers, you can also have an opportunity to remove Ram through here um, and keep most of your creatures and things that may help you. Um, so that's a good way to flip in. And then if, and that's going to really focus on that um, Duress, Agonizer, more. So we got plenty to move in or out. And then additionally on the creature side, again, Hooded Blight Frank. Um, in that case, you can look at the Wilts and you're probably going to want to keep the rest of these in there. Um, then when we get into the late game, my friends, it's a little bit different lineup. Um, we're going to have more enchantment based decks, control type stuff. Um, Rangers Guile is still going to stay in there. You're probably going to move in Barrier Breach. You might move in Gem Razor. Uh, you might move in Wilt and you might move these in. Um, so this is going to be the bigger one where you might end up uh, really, really moving things around. Um, what you're going to do uh, to take out, and if they're not playing Planeswalkers, you're going to remove these three here or those give us six. That's going to hit a big chunk of what you need to move in. Additionally, um, the other spot that I might consider going slightly lower on would be Chevelle at this point um, because he's really creature based. And you could also do that in the aggro or the mid range matchup too as a potential other look. Um, and that should give you enough to kind of get to where you need to. But just remember, he is going to trigger Hooded Blight Fang. But because of the legendary rule, um, he's worth taking a look at. Um, the only thing you could do is take a look at Questing Beast, but dropping a 4, a four 1 at the top. Um, and doing fast damage could really make a big difference. We're going to want to keep Kogla unless they're more of a control deck. If they're more control, then we're going to take a look at removing Kogla. Um, 
So Planeswalkers, that is how we're going to look at the sideboarding today. Uh, again, that's the aggro, the mid-range, the late game matchup. Super excited for this Golgari Death Touch deck. So let's go ahead and play some competitive magic now here today. Um, again, this, this deck is a Platinum to Mythic 6 plus win deck. Um, so very excited to be covering someone else's as always uh, because it's a lot of fun to check out all these competitive decks over the last four months for Zendikar's Rising here, my friends. So we have done quite a bit. Um, yesterday we did the uh, four color went out of party. Make sure you guys check that out. Very interesting deck. Um, was not able to connect uh, a ton with it, but we did get to see everything and we did get to see all the uh, interactions, um, which is very, very exciting always. All right, so standard ranks. Here we go. We got our Gari Death Touch deck uh, for a best of one. So let's hop into it here. Um, now, as always, Planeswalkers, uh, truly, I appreciate your support. So please feel free to subscribe to the channel down over there and like the video if you enjoyed it. Um, learn something new. We're looking forward to trying something different. Um, additionally, yeah, if you do got questions or comments, let me know. I think I said that down below. Or And I'm going to keep this because we got a lot going on here. We can hit ram through on fall mirror and kill something pretty early. Um, let me know. Here to help as always. Uh, let's keep looking. So, first turn here. So, we got a gruel. So, we can do this. We'll do this. Then, we'll play this main. Get our draw. Now, we can decide a few different things here. Um, we got a, a couple different options. So turn three, we can we can cast Ram through on Falmir on the ooze if we want to. And most likely will. <laughs> People aren't ready for this deck, I'm sure. So um, we still have a ram through here, so we can keep that in mind. Um, and then we'll figure out how we want to play uh, from that perspective. All right, so we will. We can ram through there. Um uh, Three or less, we can destroy brush fire if we want. Um, I'm debating pretty hard on this one actually, because ram through is going to be more value. This is still expensive. We're not going to get that far to kick it. Actually, we're going to do that after, so they don't pop scavenging ooze. And this is at instant speed, so if we need to worry about it. We can do something there. Playing a little bit slower. Let's do that first, actually. Keep that one. We'll see what's going on here. So, probably a cleave. Yeah. Not lethal, though. Uh, 
Ugh. Well, I could do three. Let's get that out of there. We can kill both of them. Target creature you control. Didn't have a choice. Did not have a choice. So they'll still be in a good spot. We don't have as much as we would like to. Ooh. Um, that's not lethal, but we do have to do this. Don't have enough. So top deck mode, it's a good top deck mode. That works. Nice. Not bad. Not bad. Guess I could have forced it. Not bad. Not enough. Should have swung in with the team. Didn't want to get that one guy blocked, but then he wouldn't have been able to attack in. Not bad. Well, super, super fun first match. Happy with that against a tier one deck in best of one, of course. So, well, tier, tier one, tier two. Um, very, very happy with that result, I guess, if we would have tacked in. They still would have blocked, so they could have been there. Um, we would have we would have ended up losing one of the fall mirrors, um, and they would have blocked on the other one. They still would have drawn. Um, they still would have drawn their wiper there, uh, and that would have severely hurt us. I'm going to keep this because I've got the draw going here. Keep that. Um, so they would have they would have blocked everything except for the snake. Um, and then they still would have killed the snake on the next turn anyway. Um, so it would have been a complete, complete uh, top deck uh, game. Oh, wow. Look at that. Look at that right off the bat. Guy in suit it is. So we have a good old Jeskai control deck here. We'll keep seeing what we can do.
So we did get to see the snake the first game. Um, but I will cast that here. Play that. We'll see if they trade. I guess. Let's see if they got a counter spell. <clears throat> oh, look at that. Of course. Of course. That's how it goes. How it goes, my friends. One, two, three, four, five. So now we're in a top deck game. I will keep pushing. Think fast. Two, three, four, five, six. Oh, if we can top deck, that would be, that would be beautiful. Give me a land. Ooh, should all take though. There's the counter. Two, three, four, five, six. <clears throat> I could have played that last turn, by the way, which I knew. Play this out. All right, we're kicking it because we can. Like 
seconds are fleeting. I don't have time for this. Oof. They'll get their extra turns in, though. They're going to get their ultimate off here. Time to improvise. We got the inscription off. We saw the snake. Let's see what we get here. Put it on him too, huh? Oh, needs something that's gonna kill something right away. Ah, uh, we'll go on him. Casey downs ten. trouble we're in trouble Let's slow this down. all right we're not gonna watch this combo off because we're done oh that is not a good matchup either for this deck not the control one for sure. They probably they could add some board wiping stuff too, and that's going to do a lot of damage for this one. Um, let's go into our third and final uh, best of three match here with our Golgari Death Touch deck. So we got Pikachu 808, my friends. So we did get this guy. We got some Koglas. We got a late game deck. I need to mulligan. This is a little bit better, but no, no black source is going to be killer. Drop Balagad. Keep going. All right, we can put Chevelle on. Another just guy control deck it is here today. It's funny, we've seen like the same matchups uh, almost every time that we play this stuff. Alright, I could try that if I wanted to. I'm going to try. Eh, let's do this. Yeah, we're not letting the Archon come on. Absolutely not. Um, our opponent discards two cards. Good thing I know the deck. And good thing we got ran through. 
Double ram through. Why must we do things the hard way? To open the mind, you must first open the heart. Oh. We need to get that death toucher back on the board. They don't have enough on the trans transmog yet. safe there. Uh, let's see what we got here. So, Trawler, we can get rid of. One, two, three, four, five, six. Trawler is the one we need to get rid of. Take the hit on one of these. Ay, ay, ay. I should kill it. I should have did that earlier. Oh, no. One, two, three, four, five. We needed a land, so we have enough. Problem is, they will, they'll cast Yorin again here. And that's gonna be game for us. We need a Death Toucher. Even with that though, they'll get that back. So we're in a really tough spot here. Really tough. Humble your mind. There is always more to learn. Think, then act. Let's see what we can get her. Here we go. Trawler. 
crawler. And We'll see what we can get. Um, three. We can get a death toucher. It's not going to help though. No transmog is not going to get off. Lethal in the air. Bust on best of one today with this deck. Unfortunate with today's top deck here, the Golgari Death Toucher. You know, you'd think it'd be faster, but for some reason, we're just getting crushed. Now, we did play all late game decks, uh, except for the Gruel Aggro. We should have beat that one, though. Um, actually, I don't, I don't necessarily think that was a lock, even though we had one. They said the oops, which is always the way it goes, right? But I, they would have double blocked. They, they top deck something that would have been a response. Um, so we, and we, they wouldn't have been at one health. They would have been at, um, way more than that. So, um, let's see here, uh, how this does in our traditional standard ranked. Again, that's four color when not a party deck. Let's go ahead here and play some best of three. We'll get at least one in here today with this one. I at I E T it is. So we'll play first. Uh, not a good start for us. And this is a Luris deck. So it's probably a rogues deck. So we're going to mulligan here. Oh, we'll keep this. Now we're going to mulligan. This we'll keep. So we'll keep five. We're going to get rid of that. Um, I'm going to get rid of that one, too. Start with that. Probably a rogues deck, to be honest, you guys. At least that's what I am feeling here. Now, we could have started with that. Yeah, there's the rogue. This is going to be a tough tough match, I think. Not in case, eh, they didn't have the fire. Oh, there we go. Keep that one. We'll put that one on the board. Oh, we got our Blight Fang on. We have a Kill Spell and we have Ram Through. And we can keep Love Struck activated. So this is going to be a big one here. We're in a good spot. They do have mill though. So we may not get that love struck. Hmm. Let's see if we can get away with it. All right. We'll 
Faker draw. Now we're sitting pretty good. Uh, we actually have lethal next turn. If I, if I can take everything off the board here. And depends on what they do. So we'll see. Now we don't have lethal. Let's get rid of that. So I will do that. I will do this. The Guiles are going to help a ton here uh, for Lull Mage when that happens. Um, they could pull Lurus back, and they could pull something back from their graveyard. That's a big play there. Um, so this is... We can pull something back from our graveyard. Let's grab a ram through. And this is game. One there. We won. We won a match. It had to be best of three, huh? Um, okay, so Pestle and Haze is nice. Um, Pestle and Haze is actually really nice here. Uh, well, actually, I take that back. They got a lot of uh, one three zero three, so that's not true. Um, cling to dust is going to be helpful. Uh, these two aren't going to be. I mean, we could take some of the draw out of their hand if we played that way. Um, so this this might actually be better. These two guys are good. Um, Kogla, I don't really need here. Questing beast is better. Cling to dust is good. Those are still good. Wilt's gone. Um, Inscription of Rune's not bad still. It's a kill spell. We do have enough kill spells. We could skip that. I think we do that. Chevelle's still good. Maybe we go. How many lands? Yeah, we got plenty on lands. Great Henge is good if we get it down. Let's just keep one of those on the top end. I think that's going to be the better play. Alright. Match two. And we mulliganed a ton. On that too which is pretty impressive uh, we'll keep this <laughs> 25 yeah that's pretty funny um, I 
need to um, double up there. That's why I didn't kill it. Are they running drawn and lock? No, yeah, drawn and lock. Get it. There it is. No, they didn't do that. They're saving it for the sky clave shade there. And they can bring it back again. That's fine. So I can give them two. We'll block. There we go. So we can block the shade again. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna let him do the damage this time. So I got my four full.
right, get that off there. And take our life back. Lower the damage. On the stack I paid, so they can't cast the cheaper cast on into. That's fine. But the good news is I can now play this. Actually, 10. Draw. If we need, um, what do we want to do here? Three, four, five, six, seven. Now, if they top decked another Soaring Thief, they're good. Yes. Target opponent discards two, return that, and destroy three or less. Uh, what do we want to return? Let's go with Chevelle here. Three or less, this one. If they have a counter, though, we're done. Be a nice top deck. There we go. life or do I want to draw? Probably want to draw, huh? We'll get that guy out first. If they pull a Agademes or something though. I mean, could have played the Agonized Remorse there, but we'll try. We'll give it a turn. Ooh. Um, so we'll play this first. Out of there. Gain some life.
Yes, we beat a rogue deck. <laughs> yes. <laughs> With the Golgari Death Touch. We did it. We did it, my friends. We got rocked in best of one, but we beat a rogues deck in best of three. I'm going to leave it at that for today. Um, we did get to see pretty much the entire deck, um, which is great. So let's go ahead here and take a look quickly. Great way to finish. I'm going to leave it at that and not push my luck. <laughs> All right, so uh, in conclusion here for today, we did go zero and three and best of one. It was a little rough. This deck is gonna do better against creature-based decks um, like we saw with the Gruel Aggro kind of matchup. The late game deck stuff uh, was pretty rough. We ran into a Jeskai Control. We ran into um, a uh, transmog deck um this again we did see everything in this deck we we did see a kogla hit the board we didn't get the great henge up there is a one of we got the hooded blight fang we got chevelle on the board um very nice in the early game and when it when it sets up uh well we did have to double mulligan that first game against the rogues deck and still come back and take it down um but other than that um, again, excels against the early game stuff, not so good against late game, decent in the mid range. Overall, in kind of the tier list here, um, you know, honestly, in best of one, I would probably at, at the top end, bottom of tier two, to be honest, um, and then probably top of tier three. And at least for best of one was not the best. You could probably put it in tier three. Just the showing was pretty tough um, and the setup's got to work out well. But then uh, best of three, we did well. We did beat a, a really, really good deck. Um, but again, that was more creature based um, and we're able to get under it and slowly kind of whittle things down in, in, a, in a well thought out manner there. Um, a very, very nice match. Honestly, again, similar uh, for best of three, even though we had a good match there. Um, I would say probably, um, you know, a tier, tier, bottom of tier two, probably tier three type deck. Um, but with that said, super fun. Um, that last match kind of really, really made my, made my day in terms of the best of one matches that we hit. Um, so uh, with that said, Planeswalkers, I hope you guys enjoyed today's uh, lineup here with the Golgari Death Touch. Um, again, kind of an ode and nod to uh, thin, the, thin the Fang Bearer here coming out in Chaldeum. Uh, give you some ideas of some things that you could play. I thought this was a nice uh, six plus win platinum to mythic uh, top deck to cover today with, with some of those things because we haven't talked too much about Chaldeum. Caldium yet, um, so Caldime. Um, with that said, Planeswalkers, truly I appreciate your support, so please feel free to subscribe down over there. Additionally, like the video if you enjoyed it. You guys can like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter and Twitch. Stay up to date on content like this. Additionally, Planeswalkers, other great ways to support the channel down below. If you have questions or comments, uh, let me know. You guys can hop in the Discord server, hang out there, and, and uh, chat as well with a lot of uh, cool people. So. Um, here's what we got going on again on the sideboard uh, so you guys could see it. Um, super fun. Glad uh, we'll, we'll, we'll top it off with that uh, good old rogues, rogues beat there. So um, Planeswalkers, you stay safe. Uh, you take care until next time. We do have a lot more things coming here your way uh, before Kalheim comes out. Um, so stay tuned. Almost at 100 decks here uh, for, for Zendikar's Rising. It was crazy. Different stuff. So um, we'll see you soon. Mithras out.